I think guys like um, Benavidez, guys like Morel, they'll look otherwise. They look other other places now, and they'll go t towards Abivo, who uh, who now becomes the undisputed LA heavyweight. I think that he should he win this fight, and and, and better beef as well. Either either one of them, should they win this fight, they become the guy. Welcome, fight fans, to another edition of Boxing Scenes, top stories only on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George Dimitellis. Quick reminder to download the Pro Box TV app where apps are available for some great content about the sweet science, including the WBA light heavyweight champion, Dimitri Bivol, who said in a video interview with Pro Box TV that he is supremely prepared for his undisputed light heavyweight title bout against Artur Berterbiev in Saudi Arabia. Here's what he had to say to our own and Lance Pugmire. All my skills should be on the highest level. Not only just speed, not only just uh, movement, everything. Uh, jab, right hand, my strength also to show that, uh, to, to show the dangerous from me. Everything should be in the best level. You have seen how this guy like systematically like beats down his opponents over whether it's three rounds or eight rounds or 10 rounds, he gets to them. Um, how do you know that you're prepared for those, uh, for handling that onslaught that you're going to receive? I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> we will see. Uh, no, of course, I, uh, I could see how he's doing it. Uh, I could, uh, I could, uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I could try to be ready for all of it. I'm yeah. training hard for for all of this. Of course, I'm practicing, but uh, in uh, real, we could talk a lot about the fight, how it, how it will go on, how I'm ready for this fight, uh, and all of this. But in real, only the fight will show. Yeah. Um, I, I would imagine you don't want to feel his power at all, but in a way, maybe it's helpful to know what his best punch feels like, and then you know what it's, what it is. It, what can you make about that? Oh, I, it's not nice to be honest, to get some punch and to realize is it good or not? I just, uh, just believe me. It's not good. It's not, it's not okay. nice to get any punch, yeah. you know, to to try and understand and analyze that it's dangerous or it's not dangerous. Even some uh, easy punch could be dangerous. It's not about the heavy and strong punch. It's about uh, to not uh, to not be ready for the punch. This is the hardest punch, which you don't ex uh, don't uh, which you are not uh, waiting. You know, mm -hmm. it's like in the life, the hardest punch in the life where you don't accept it, expect it. Yeah. And, you know, look, I mean, you don't have, it's not like you're 20, you know, with 20 knockouts, you don't have a ton of knockouts. You have some, you have knockout power, but how do you plan to use your own ability, your own punching power that we saw in the Canelo fight and have seen in so many other fights to win this fight? Are you, are you uh, confident that that is how you will achieve victory in this over, over 12 rounds, you're just going to continually batter him? Uh, you know, I'm always uh, trying to be ready for 12 rounds. And this fight, uh, of course, uh, I have to be ready. I have to be ready for all 12 rounds. And about punching, about, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a puncher, amazing puncher like him. But uh, still, I have, I have some punch. Uh, I could uh, receive the good, uh, I could, uh, I could land some some good punches also. Obviously, this victory also elevates you in the pound for pound rankings. I know you've been in light heavyweight for so long, but to dominate it as an undisputed champion, does that mean a lot to you that someone will will say the best boxer in the world is Dimitri Bivol? Of course, it's uh, it will be great for my ego, <laughs> to to my history that uh, I could be the best. So, yes, this is why I'm in the in this game in in boxing because i want to be the best i want to 
I wanna признание людей, как сказать. I wanna, I wanna get respect from the people, from boxing society, from uh, boxing fans. The words of WBA light heavyweight champion Dmitry Bivol here on Top Stories. And, well, he's not the only world champion that's going to speak here on Top Stories. We got three of our own. We have Chris Algieri, we have Pauli Malignaggi, and we have Showtime Sean Porter joining us here on Top Stories. So, Sean, what did you make of the comments of Dmitry Bivol? And who do you like in this fight? And why do you think they'll win? Um, I... I still like Dimitri in this fight. Um, he's it, It's funny. I think there's a language barrier. And so I think he comes off a little bit seeming like he's not confident in himself. But I think it's just a language barrier. I think he's trying to find the right words to express what he truly thinks and what he truly feels about this fight. I think he's confident in his abilities. I think he's big enough. I think he's strong enough. I think he's fast enough. I think he's uh, intelligent enough. I think his his footwork's phenomenal, uh, especially at that size. I, I think he has all of the attributes that can get past a Dimitri Bivol, or I'm sorry, a, a uh, Arthur Bedebeev, who has a 100% knockout rate. Um, I think that uh, in the in the interview, the thing that I, I really appreciated him saying was. You know the 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 and I and I I understood what he was trying to say. He was what he was trying to say in reference to Lance asking him about taking Bivol's hardest punch. What he was, well, I'm sorry, the uh, the B's hardest punch. He was saying you don't want to take that punch, and you you don't. No fighter, you we don't need to know what that feels like. We we'd rather you know get in and get out unscathed. You know what I mean? But he said he needs to be ready for everything because the punches that you don't see, those are the ones that really have an effect on you. Those are the ones that knock you out. And, you know, someone, I, I, the punch that uh, Errol Spence hit me with was the, was the only punch in that entire fight that I did not see. And it was the one that ultimately ended up breaking my legs down and, 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 and put me, put my hand on the canvas, you know? So I expect, I expect uh, Dimitri to be very prepared for this fight. As he said, he is, I, I believe it. Um, and I expect him to be very confident and game for whatever uh, better beef is going to bring to him. Yeah. Paulie, what do you make of the comments of Bivol and who do you like in this fight and why? Yeah. Listen, I think he's confident. I think he's, uh, you know, he, he's seems like he's ready for the fight. He seemed in a jovial mood and a, in a sort of a lighthearted mood. Um, I, I think he's, it's sort of the calm before the storm. The, the hard work is kind of behind you. So, you know, you're coming to the end of camp. You're fo he seems focused and ready. Um, I don't know, the, the whole, I, I do agree, Champ, I do agree with you with the whole language barrier maybe can give a little bit of a, a, of a misunderstanding of, of his mood. I felt like uh, when I saw him, when I was watching that interview, I felt like he is confident, but it just doesn't always come out uh, in that way because of the probably the language barrier but I also don't think the the questioning was that intelligent either you know you would you want to get hit and test his end like bro you're not gonna get in the shower without getting wet you're gonna get hit anyway it's a fight so I don't know why would you put yourself why, why would you tell yourself who, what other what fighter would put himself out there and say you know who used to do that Paulie or um uh Manny used to do that Manny would come in in, in the first and second round and he like put his hands up and he like let you hit him I, yeah. And I think to myself, I'm like, Manny, what are you doing? Why are you letting him hit you? Yeah, he did that at one point. He didn't do that with me. <laughs> he didn't try to get it at all when I fought him. <laughs> yeah. He, he might have done that at one, time, one, two, one, you know, one point, but he, he didn't do it in the higher weight classes. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen him do it before, but yeah, I, 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 I didn't. Yeah, yeah go I, ahead, Paulie. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I saw him. I remember he did it to Cotto on the rope when he was just laying on the ropes staying there. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have a no comment on that one. <laughs> I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I, uh, I honestly, I, I, I took, I took confidence from that. You know, I, you got to take it for what it is. Yes, there's a language barrier there, but it seemed to me like someone who's very genuinely understanding what's in front of him, and that that speaks to his preparedness. Not only is he prepared uh, physically, but it seems like he's prepared mentally and psychologically uh, for what he has in front of him. He understands that Better Biev is the most dangerous opponent of his career, and that he's like he said, he's like, I need to be good at everything, and everything needs to be ready. And I took confidence in that because he seemed very calm. You mentioned jovial, you know, his, his attitude. I've actually, I, I've, I've talked to Bivol completely off air before. 
That's, that's his personality. That's the way he is. And when you can see someone being who they really are in those kind of situations, I think that really does speak to his, his confidence and fact, the fact that he is very genuine in what he's saying. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, like exactly what you guys said, that's just, that's coming from a non-boxer, asking a question like that, someone who's never laced up gloves, someone who's never been hit before. Oh, do you want to feel that guy's power? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You I don't want to take it easy on Lance, all right? Take it easy. I don't want to feel nothing. It's not just that. It's... You're gonna get hit anyway. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a fight. You're gonna get either, and the, the moment in the fight is gonna come, whether it's early, whether it's later, whether it's soon, whether it's after. You know, you're gonna feel the power regardless. You're in a fight. You do not get in the shower without getting wet. You cannot play in the mud without getting dirty. It's it's it was uh it was a question that especially with a guy who you're dealing with that already has a language barrier, I I, I just didn't think it was the right question. And and so I could, could see how it could be misunderstood the way he answered it. So let me ask you this, Sean. Uh, Lance mentioned that if Bivo wins this fight, he's going to be considered pound for pound one of the best on the planet. He probably is already considered one of the pound, best pound for pound on the planet there. If he, he, Bivo talked about being the sport's best fighter and wants to win this and then head into bigger fights like maybe Canelo or even David Benavides there. What does Bivo stand if he beats better be of here in, in Saudi Arabia in a few days' time? I think he becomes the new mark. For forever, it's been Canelo. Canelo's been the mark. If you were 54, you were trying to make your way to 168 to get a fight with 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 with, with Canelo, and so on and so forth. I think guys like um, Benavidez, guys like Morel, they'll look otherwise. They look other other places now, and they'll go t towards a Bivol, who uh, who now becomes the undisputed and light heavyweight. I think that he should he win this fight, and and, and better beef as well. Either either yeah. one of them. Should they win this fight, they become the guy. I don't think either of them winning this fight scares the elite guys around the division and in the division. I think everybody in light heavy and super metal, I think all those guys want to be the number one guy in the world. And all of those guys will be willing to, uh, to uh, challenge the winner of this fight. Yeah, Chris, what do you make of of Bivol saying if he wins this fight, moving on to bigger fights with Alvarez and Benavides, and then how does that kind of solidify his place in boxing? Well, yeah, the, the argument does, it does open the door for the argument that possibly he is, he is pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world, uh, without a doubt, because you have to look at that, and you, then you, you have to go, all right, how do you beat this guy? And that's what pound for pound for me is all about. If they matched up theoretically in a, in a thought experiment, they're the same size, how does one guy beat the other guy? And Bivol becomes that kind of guy, it's like that style, how do you crack that code? Because no one's done it. If he's able to do what he has been doing to guys to better be Ev, that's a huge feather in the cap. And it's also an argument there. It's like, man, this guy is able to beat every type of style because of his distance control, his jab, um, his busyness, his ability to do it for 12 rounds. It's similar to how Usyk is. Like, it's just like, yeah, you, you see Usyk, and the guy's undefeated. He's one of the winningest guys around. You know, it, it's hard to crack that, that style, and that's where the argument comes in. But, I mean, our pound for pound right now is very strong. We got Crawford, we got Usyk, we got Inouye. You got a guy like the winner of this fight's going to be there as well. So, um, yeah, I think it, it, it speaks to the health of, of the sport that we have such a, a high, high caliber in pound for pound fighters right today. Yeah, Pauly, what's your take on Bivol and his future there and his, his place in boxing in terms of pound for pound rankings and, and his status? As I'm thinking, as I'm listening to these guys talk, uh, you know, it, it all makes sense to me. He is a guy who has this in and out style, but he's ruthless in the way he makes you pay. He, you know, there's a, when you're in and out, there's a, a, th a threat to yourself where you can sometimes be too much out and you start to go in flight and you don't make guys pay enough. But when you're in and out, but you're ruthlessly offensive as, with that in and out, you're able to make guys, you know, keep your, keep your mind defensive, but yet also make guys consistently pay to where you, you basically put them in your pocket because they're constantly paying so they start to doubt their own aggression. There has to be a ruthlessness to that though, because if you're, if you're too passive with them making guys pay, eventually you go into flight and they, and they press you. I think this is, when I look at, if you offhand, if I look at the best styles in boxing history, the best fighters in the world have had this style. But only if they're making you pay ruthlessly. Mayweather, Whitaker, Ali, uh, uh, your Beavols of the world, um, so on and so forth. I think when you had a guy who was, even your Ray Robinsons, again, this, this range control, ruthless uh, defensive-minded but attack-minded to making you pay all the time. So setting up offense off the change of range and also making you pay when you miss off the change of range because it keeps you off balance. It's just, it, there's a consistent offense to it, but there's also a consistent confusion of range to it. And if you have the legs and the ability to do it and your sense of timing to do it, 
you know, when I look at it over the course of history, these are the guys that have dominated. When you have had guys that have been the best at this, they've been able to dominate the most in, in, their, in their generations. Um, and I think Beeble has this kind of style as well. Uh, it's interesting. Also, another interesting thing is if, he, you know, if he's able to win this fight, he's undisputed at 175. Canelo, well, he was undisputed at 168 if he would have fought his mandatories. But nonetheless, you'd have almost, you know, unification, guys almost fully unified in both weight classes. It could also lead to a rematch. Who knows? Yeah, it certainly would be fascinating. Dimitri Bivol, 23 and 0, 12 wins by way of knockout. And also a reminder, a watch along here on Pro Box TV, on YouTube, and on the app as well of Better Be a Bivol with Paulie and Chris. Definitely want to check that out. The last one with Ronnie Rios and Nick Ball was very popular, to say the least. And of course, any other developments about this fight between Bivol and Better Be you can get that information here on Top Stories. We'd like to remind you to scan the QR code, like and subscribe, and leave your comments on our YouTube channel. And quick reminder, download the ProBox TV app where you can get the best live fight series in all of boxing, October 16th, Wednesday Night Fights. And then three days later, Tim Zhu going for the IBF Super Welterweight title against Bakram Murtazaliev. You can see that on Amazon Prime Video, October 19th from Orlando. That should be a great fight as well. We'll see if Zhu can recapture a world title. I am George DiMatellis, and this is Boxing Scene's Top Stories. Wednesday Night Fights. Dynamite action on Wednesday Night Fights every other Wednesday on your boxing channel. Coming up on your next Wednesday Night Fights, October 16th, Chris Primetime Colbert and Omar Super Salcedo step into the ring for what is sure to be a barn burner. Live from the ProBox Event Center in Plant City. Get your tickets at ProBoxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights. Boxing superstar Tim Zhu is coming to Prime Video. Don't miss this championship showdown as Zhu takes on undefeated Murtaza Liao for the Super Welterweight World Title. Saturday, October 19th, streaming live exclusively on Prime Video for all Prime members. For more Pro Box TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.